In boxing for the longest time, the pound for pound list is one of the most frequently talked about topics when it comes to the sport. Magazines make it their main focus, like Ring Magazine, top 10 pound for pound fighters. Just ask anyone on Twitter, You'll like every day you'll see it. What's your top five pound for pound? What's your top 10 pound for pound? And for me, I feel like it doesn't really matter because it's subjective at the end of the day. If you ask someone what's your pound for pound list, technically they could say anyone. You could say Dillian White is your number one pound for pound. Like literally, it's subjective. But I feel like at this point and as of what happened yesterday, I feel like the top five pound for pound has been sealed for now for who the top five guys are so i want to make a video today on the top five pound for pound guys most people will not agree with my four and five pick but everyone knows the top three but after what happened last night i feel like it has changed and i feel like the top five i strongly feel this way and i feel like these are the top five best fighters in boxing and I don't know how you can disagree with me when I really when you look really look at the stats, I don't know how you can disagree with me. So without further ado, as of July first, twenty twenty four, here is the top five pound for pound fighters in boxing. Coming in at number five, we have Canelo Alvarez. And yes, I know, like I said, these four and five picks are going to be a bit controversial because Canelo really hasn't done much recently. He beat Jaime Munguia, beat a one fifty four Charlo going up, but what he's already done in the sport, it's undeniable. The amount, you know, he's undisputed 168, 160 champion, 175 champion. You still have to put him up super high pound for pound. Like, look, a guy like Bivol beat him, but a pound for pound list is at their, who would be the best fighter in the world at their weight? Because technically a heavyweight, that's why you don't see heavyweights on the pound for pound list often, because you know, they'd beat everybody. That's why it's called pound for pound, because a 115 guy is not going to be a 168 guy, but if we're talking about as a fighter in general, who's better? It could be the 115 guy. That's why it's pound for pound. And Canelo, yes, he lost to Bivol, but his accomplishments are still so stacked and he hasn't retired yet. So I feel like you have to give the number five spot to Canelo Alvarez. If you don't have him number five, you have him number six, seven, or like even eight, that's fine. But I feel like you have to put him up pretty high still because of his accomplishments. So Canelo, he's still in the top five pound for pound. I don't see how you can have him... You can have them four, maybe, have them four, maybe, but four or five, I feel like are strongly the spots where Canelo should be. At number four, and this is going to surprise people, but last night I had my mind changed. And well, my mind was, it changed in a lot of people's eyes because number four is Bam Rodriguez. And last night he had an amazing performance against Juan Francisco Estrada to win a belt at 115 after unifying 112 and going up. He two-weight world champion now and he was already unified and he his resume is why he's so high up here so at only 24 years age, at, at only 20 feet i can't speak at only 24 years of age that's only two years older than me this dude was born in like 2000 so he's still super young he has wins over Srisaket Sorong Visai, or as my friend likes to say kick cat swipe your visa card so kick cat swipe your visa card uh sunny edwards Carlos Quadras, and then Juan Francisco Estrada, who just got two wins over Chocolatito. And I feel like he lost those, but at the same time, he's still a great fighter. You can't deny that. So where else can you put Bam? If he beats Nakatani, bro, he's top three. And look, four, well, is he though? Because the top three are really good. But dude, if he beats Nakatani, if he beats, if he beat, if he went up and beat anyway, he's number one pound for pound forever. I don't even care. If you beat, if you beat in a way after what he's already done at this young age, that's crazy. But I wouldn't put him in with Inouye right now, but bam, he's super young. His accomplishments are already insane at 24 and it's just going to get better uh, for bam from here. And he got dropped last night. It was just a slip. And remember when you're going up against good competition, stuff like that can happen. And he destroyed Estrada anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but Yes, number five is Canelo Alvarez. Number four is Bam Rodriguez. Coming in at number three, I feel like these top three are... Everyone knows who the top three are, but it really depends on what order you have them in. But I feel like the order that I have them in is most reasonable. So number three, and I feel like... Because in this next month, there's no pound-for-pound pound fights. But August 3rd, we're going to see Terrence Crawford fight Israel Madrimov. And I think Terrence Crawford is number three. But... If he beats Madrimov and becomes another weight world champion, undefeated Madrimov, I think he's number one. So 
it really could change. So this month, the, my pound for pound list applies all throughout July because August 3rd, it could change. If he beats Madrimov, he's going to be number one. But look at what Crawford has done already. Two-way undisputed world champion. And I know his resume isn't the best. That's why he's not number one pound for pound. But he's the only, alongside Usyk and Inoue, he's the only undisputed two-way world champion as a male. Uh, Carissa Shields will go on about that. So, uh, As a male, he's the only two-way undisputed world champion. And his resume is not that good. I'll be honest. That's why he's not number one. He had an amazing win over uh, Errol Spence Jr., which was amazing. And a win over Sean Porter was nice. Uh, like, prime Victor Postal. But he really made guys look bad. That's why people don't really rate his resume. But if he beats Madrimov, bro, that's a wrap. He has to be number one. And Terrence Crawford's personally my favorite fighter on the list. I love Terrence Crawford. He has that dog in him. Last 10 fights... It could be 10 or 11, all knockouts. And this dude's just a dog. He has the best killer instinct in the sport. He's just a dog, dude. When people talk about having the dog inside of you, that is Terrence Crawford. So Terrence Crawford has to be number three in the top three. I have him number three. If you have him like number one or number two right now, I, I don't mind. But you have to have him in the top three. Terrence Crawford is a dog. So number five, we have Canelo Alvarez. Number four, we have Bam Rodriguez. Number three, Terrence Crawford. And number two, we have Nooya Inoue. And Nooya Inoue has been like a mythical creature of some type. They call him the monster. And this dude is the monster because this is one of the dudes in boxing where I said, you know, although his resume isn't that good, I would, if we're talking about weight for weight, I'd like pound for pound, I'd probably pick him to beat anyone in boxing. Except there's a few exceptions. There's a few exceptions. Like I said, if in a way and Canelo were the same weight when uh, Canelo's in his prime, I'd probably pick Canelo due to Styles because in a way couldn't beat him and Canelo would probably just. But that's just an example, and I, I you know, that doesn't really matter. But in a way's accomplishments basically the same as Crawford, but I feel like it's a little better. That win over Fulton where he dominated him and knocked him out, that was. One of the best performances I've seen in boxing in a long time. And then that win, the two wins over Donair, first one was close, fractured over the bone. And then he had um, the destroyed him in a rematch. So his resume isn't amazing, but you've got to look at the accomplishments. Two-way undisputed champion. That is so hard to do. And I feel like the Fulton win really put him up in the top three. And he was already a dominant champion. But if Inoue goes up, and I already made a, a video saying how far Inoue can go. If he go, if he becomes undisputed at 126, I feel like, unless Crawford, if Crawford beats Canelo, then he's going to be, un, he's, he'll be like number one for like the next 30 years, bro. I don't even care, but that's, that's, un, that's unlikely to happen. So I don't, I don't know. It could happen, but um, in a way, if he go, comes undisputed at 126, even though there's not a little, lot of good names there, if you're undisputed in three weights, bro, that's a wrap. That is a wrap. You are number one pound for pound. So, in a way, his resume is not the best, but you got to look at the accomplishments. So, number five, Canelo Alvarez. Four, Bam Rodriguez. Three, Terrence Crawford. Two, Nooya Inoue. And who else could be number one? It's Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk. So, Crawford and Inoue, I was saying how they've done so much, but they don't have the best resumes. Usyk's resume is outstanding. And it just keeps aging like fine wine. Like Dubois just got a win over Hergovic and he beat Dubois. And then Dubois is going to fight Joshua. Dude. So let's look at his resume. Two wins over Anthony Joshua, a win over Tyson Fury, and he's probably going to beat him in December again. So that's two wins over Anthony Joshua, two wins over Tyson Fury, an undefeated Tyson Fury, by the way. He's a two-weight undisputed champion. And then a win over Dubois as well. And the cruiserweight run... People don't forget how stacked that division was when Usyk was in it. Meredith Bredis is a top-tier guy. Murat Gassiev is a top-tier guy. Glavaki is a top-tier guy. Bro, Usyk's resume is elite, and you got to give him his props, especially at heavyweight. And you know, I said how heavyweights usually aren't on the pound-for-pound -pound list. He's not a heavyweight. He's a cruiserweight that went up to heavyweight. He's naturally like 200 pounds, and he said after he beats Fury, he might want to go back down to cruiserweight. And that's crazy. I don't even know what to say about that. If he does that, if he beats Obataya, if he goes back down and beats Obataya, he's like certified GOAT status. There's nothing else you can say. He's already GOAT status, dude, by the things he's done. The win over Fury really 
really put him number one. And I feel like you got to give him his props right now. Crawford may beat Madrimov, and I think he will, and he'll be number one. But right now, you got to give it to Usyk. And, you know, in a way, could have his time to be number one, but right now is Alexander Usyk's time. Usyk, you are the man. So that is my top five pound for pound. A top 10 would be too hard. The names 5 through 10, I, I could make a lot of mistakes, so I don't want to go through that. But I feel like I'm very confident in this list. Bam, Bam at 4, Canelo at 5 may be controversial, but you've got to agree with this video. Like, you got to be like, this video is fair. So, um, yeah, sorry it's been a minute since I uploaded. Yeah, hope y'all are doing well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, JackAlter0, and then Instagram, JackAlter underscore. And I think that's it. Uh, what's your top five? It should, it should look similar. should look similar. Come on. Uh, yeah, but that's it. God bless and peace.